Are you expectant tonight? Tonight God wants to heal the sick. So it's important to be expectant. So as to receive from the Lord. I'm grateful to daddy and mama for the privilege to bring us the word of the Lord. Bless someone tremendously tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus. Just lift your hands toward heaven and talk to the Lord. Saturate my heart, cause an overflow. Oh, be my Saturate my heart, cause an overflow. Precious Father, we thank you for the privilege of tonight, for the privilege of the presence, for the privilege of the world. We are persuaded that tonight many lives will be turned around, destinies transformed, chains will be broken by the power of the Holy Ghost. And so for these we say, take all the glory. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the power. And for thine is the excellent glory. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Tonight it will be a camp procession. I'd like to show us certain truths from the scriptures, precepts upon precepts, lines upon lines. Because it's a night of faith. The Lord wants to break chains and the Lord wants to heal infirmities. But it's important for us to understand and to be able to exercise our faith. Thank you, Lord. I want you to follow me carefully tonight. If you understand what I will teach tonight, you will walk out of the crisis of your life. You will walk out. You see, there are seven realms of power. The least of those realms is exercise of authority over darkness. That's the lowest realm of power. The reason is because the authority with which we conquer darkness was handed over to us on account of the finished works. So if we understand it, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we can expel any form of darkness effortlessly just by trusting in Christ. It's the lowest realm of power. Stories were told of great men like Smith Wigglesworth. He came down to his sitting room one night hearing a sound and he saw a dark being on his rocking chair causing chaos. And he said, I thought it was something else and he went to sleep because he understood that he spoiled principalities and powers and he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in victory so when it comes to the demonic we exercise authority that's why we cast out devils the second realm of power is where you have the ability to command creation to come under the government of God. That dimension is for sons. He said the, es the earnest expectation of creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. The ability to rule over creation has to do with your level of spiritual maturity. 
Because creation will respond only to songs. The third realm of power is the ability to tame flesh. To bring your flesh under the government and the governance of God's spirit. It's more difficult to walk as a transformed man than to cast out demons. It takes complete submission and yieldedness to God. It takes alignment to the word of the Lord to be conformed to the image of Christ. And that's what we've been trying to achieve in the last two days. That will require light. It will require fire. It will require every arsenal in your artillery and sometimes it takes a lifetime to come under the government of god so paul said that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering and by all means that i may be conformed the fourth realm of power is the ability to sustain spiritual hunger in ever increasing intensity it's difficult to sustain hunger that's why you catch a fire today you are revived today in one week it depletes because men who sustain hunger are men that are healed in the secret place and when a man begins to hunger for god the pantings of his spirit are vibrations of life in the spirit the principalities know them The fifth realm of power is the ability to sustain humility. You come to a point where you are detached from this world. Nothing moves you. That's a place of absolute self-denial. So you are not moved by the affairs of this life. You have become a servant of God indeed. It's easy to find men who can cast out devils. But it's difficult to find a humble man and those are the men that god embraces to himself because he resists the proud but he giveth more grace to the humble the sixth realm of power is the realm of brokenness brokenness is the exchange of self for god it's that point where you are completely empty of yourself and you are completely full of god is what pedestals men in the place of authority and men will not come to that point until they are baptized with the fear of the lord the fear of the lord is what brings a man to a place of brokenness 20 and four elders they fall off their faces from their thrones they cast their crowns all they want is more of god and the seventh realm of power is the realm of love. There you have become absolutely immortalized with the nature of God. But tonight, we want to function at the lowest realm of power to deal with demons. You know, if men don't travel in the spirit, they think the crisis of life in the natural are the greatest crisis. So we, we struggle to receive things that are in the natural that's the lowest level that's why jesus said seek first the kingdom and its righteousness he said all these things you are pursuing we the gentiles are seeking he said those ones in the kingdom they are additions you pursue god you pursue his kingdom every other thing is an addition so i said that to strengthen your heart tonight that whatever it is that is that visible crisis they will vanish this night <laughs> you know i went to uniburn sometime last year and god asked me to teach them on transformation and when i was done teaching i dropped the mic i was leaving and god said come sing a song that he wants to heal oh thank you lord jesus i carried the mic and i sang the song for five minutes and we said okay check if you are healed and 77 persons were healed in five minutes but it took two hours of preaching for few people to receive fire and be transformed 
The Bible said healing is the children's bread. It's your inheritance. If you know what you need to know, you will walk out of sickness as if it doesn't exist. That's the truth I want to share with us tonight. And when we are done, we will pray for the sick and there will be healings. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 17. You know from verse 15 the bible said and the lord god planted a garden in the east side of eden and he put the man there and he gave him an instruction from verse 17 and the lord commanded the man saying go back to verse 16 of every tree of the garden you may freely eat but of the three of the knowledge of good and evil thou shall not eat for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. You know, it is the designer that understands the product he designs more than every other person. In Genesis 1.26, he said, let us make man in our own image, after our likeness. And he said, in the image of God, he made man, male and female, he made them. So man is actually not a male. Man is actually male and female. The word is ish. It means a species. So when he created the species called man, both male and female, he put, he brought them from within himself. And in Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, he went to the dust of the ground, gathered the dust together, and he put that breath that he brought from within himself into that dust that he molded together and that combination of spirit and dust became man that's why we are called humans humus man the man from the dust so god said this man will be formidable this man will not know any form of attack whatsoever except he eats of the three of the knowledge of good and evil so the safety of that man was his ability to obey the Lord. So, the power the devil will have over that man is when he disobeys. So long as that man did not disobey God, it doesn't matter how many mosquitoes are around. So Adam, while he was in Eden, there was never a time when there was an earthquake. There was never a time when Adam was sick. There was never a time. Adam did not know what death was. Adam could enter into the belly of the sea and play with every creature in the sea and name them. This is your name. This is your name. The lion showed up. He named all of them and lions were his pets. So, the devil, the animals, nature, nothing had power over Adam so long as he kept the commandment of God. So the devil went to his archive and did a research. And he discovered the only way this man can suffer. Because if you stab that man, he will not be wounded. You know, the Bible said in Joel chapter 2, that even if they fall upon the sword, they will not be hurt. That's the way the man was designed. If you like, carry a knife and stab him, he can't die. The moment you remove the knife, it will heal up. That's how the man was designed. So the security of the man was his obedience to God, his ability to keep the word of the Lord. So the devil saw it. He tried every means. There was no way he could hurt the man. So he came and he began to attack that area of his security. And he said to the man in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 1, Did God say you should not eat of the tree that is in the garden? What he was trying to achieve was to breach the man's stronghold. Because he knew that the weakness of the man was not within himself. The weakness and the strength of the man was locked in that instruction. The moment he can sabotage that instruction, 
the man will naturally become a slave. Did God say you should not eat of the tree that is in the garden? He said we can eat of all the trees, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we are not even permitted to touch it. The day we touch it, we will die. He said, come on. You will not surely die. Have you not been existing for long? Have you died? Okay, how will you die? And suddenly the man saw that the tree was good for food. And the man went and took the tree. And the moment he ate it, death was introduced. So, sickness entered into the realm. Not because the body of man was designed to be sick. Sickness entered into the realm because the man opened the gate to disobedience. And there was no way that could be remediated. So every man became prone to sickness. And God began to research what to do to deliver the man from this plague. Because when he created the man, sickness was not supposed to exist in the man. The constitution of the man was not designed to have a place for sickness. The only way sickness has entered is because there has been a genetic mutation. The spirit of the man had been altered on account of disobedience. Because the system was designed such that the moment the man disobeyed God, even the animals that feared him began to attack him. Nature rebelled against him. Cold could now give the man fever. Mosquito now bites the man to give him sickness. The lion wanted to eat the man up because the order of the realm was hinged on his obedience. And the man continued to suffer that plague. And the first stone that God pulled in order to provide remediation to the negative effect that the man suffered was to reestablish laws. Because it was laws the man violated. So in Genesis chapter 15 from verse 26, the Lord now came to man and said to him, If you will hearken to my word, and keep my commandments then i will not put on you this sickness that i have put on the egyptian what it simply means it's not like god is going around putting sickness on people no that's not what it means what it means is that so long as the man walk in rebellion the way god designed the system sickness will attach itself to him death will attach itself to him crisis will attach itself to him so he said the only way you can step out of this thing that the system have designed afflicts with is by keeping my law so man needed to stay healthy by obeying god so if the man wanted to be healthy all he needed to do was to pay attention to the laws of god so the more you keep the law of god the more healthy you are and in exodus 23 25 he said god now shifted further he said now beyond keeping my law there is another strategy this was a research going on in the spirit because god was looking for a way to restore the man back to what he designed because what he designed for the man was a life of rest everything he needed was available if he thought about it he had it if he commanded it he came so god was researching what do i do to restore this man back to rest and god migrated from keeping my law and he now came further he said if you will worship me i will bless thy bread and thy waters exodus 23 25 and i will remove sickness from within thee so he did, migrated from obeying the lord he now came to worshiping god so if you wanted to live healthily all you needed to do was to what to worship god more so in order to be healed you need to do research on what worship means and if you know it and you are doing it you are shielded from sickness so the issue of health is actually not about how strong you are it's about your understanding of your spiritual advantages so the first generation of people that received god's intervention were obedient people the more they obeyed god the more they were healed the next generation were worshipers the more they worship the lord the more they were healed and when god looked at it that was still not enough because god was not looking for robots god wanted people to worship him by their free volition worship was not supposed to be something that was compelled 
Because if that's what it's about, it's no longer God they were worshipping. It was healing they were worshipping. It was health they were worshipping. Now, that's the crisis some of us have. So when we give in church, we give to receive. So it's a bargain. So God migrated. When we pray, we pray to receive. So you see a brother praying. Every day fasting for 40 days. And then you say, wow. God has found another person. This man will change the world. And on the 39th day, he received an appointment with Chevron. And prayer ends. Even the fasting will not be complete. Because what he was doing was a bargain with the spirit. So God saw the heart of man. He now knew that strategy was not working. So God shifted to another strategy. And the next strategy was for him to come and take the penalty for our sins so that healing will become free so in isaiah 53 from verse 5 he said he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him by his child we were healed so any man who wanted to receive healing all he needed to do was to look at the lord so god typified it in the wilderness when they disobeyed god snakes began to bite them the natural thing to do was to begin to obey god but god had migrated from there the natural thing to do was to worship god but god had migrated from there and god said to moses make a brazen serpent and hang it anybody that looks at it will be healed from the bite of the snake so god brought us to a sphere now this sphere god brought us to was a sphere where healing was unconditional so the moment we receive it gratitude now makes us want to obey god gratitude now makes us want to worship god so we worship god after we are healed actually because we come to him having no record before him we come to him having no qualification all we need to do is to look upon him so this became what the israelite looked up to so every prophet prophesied the coming of the messiah the day that the messiah will come where all you need to do was to look at him and everything you need you have and they waited for many years until once upon a time they heard that a virgin was with child a virgin was with child and the virgin gave birth and that child 30 years later came into nazareth and everybody he touched was healed in john chapter 9 jesus shows up in the tabernacle and there was a man born blind and he asked them a question the disciples now asked him who seen that this man was born blind is it the man is it his father is it his mother and jesus said nobody the issue of sickness now is not about a law the issue of sickness is not about worship because the man didn't even know jesus and jesus said i must do the work of him that sent me while it is day the night cometh when no man walk and jesus healed the man and let him go and the disciples began to understand that the time has come to receive everything we need only by believing in the lord so the cure to affliction is no longer an act of obedience the cure to affliction is no longer an act of worship necessarily the cure to affliction now becomes faith in the lord so every time we struggle what we need to do is to find out what must i do to believe jesus shows up in lazarus's tomb and the sister cried if you were here our brother would not have died and he said have i not said to you john chapter 11 verse 40 if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the power the glory of god so what separates you from your healing is actually your unbelief so why then do we preach we preach to activate faith in the heart of the people and the first way to activate faith is to let you know that there is nothing you will ever do to qualify for healing because god has migrated from there there was a time when you needed to do something to be healed that was when we were walking by the law there was a time when you needed to cry and call on the net to be healed but now all you need to do is to believe 
the day that faith is activated in your life that day you become a candidate of deliverance that's why deliverance now is preached we just come to tell people that the lord has taken it away can you believe the bible said jesus came to nazareth in mark chapter 6 and he said he could dare do no mighty works jesus could not do any mighty work why he said because of their unbelief because of their unbelief jesus tried he actually tried but he couldn't and you now say what what do you mean because he said he could not do he didn't say he didn't do he could not he tried to do mighty works he couldn't he said because of their unbelief they could not put their faith in him but here was jesus walking past jericho and a man cried son of david have mercy on me and he turned he said what do you want the moment a man shows or exercise faith god become urgent because every time a sick person came to jesus he was willing to heal him so god is if you study from matthew chapter 8 you will see how zealous jesus was about healing in matthew chapter 8 the bible said he came down from the mountain and the first thing he saw he saw a man that was leprous he said stretch thy hands the man was healed and jesus went immediately to peter's mother-in-law and she was down with fever jesus said be healed when the evening was come there was a crusade people gathered jesus healed all of them and jesus left and went to the mountain and they crossed over and jesus joined them on the water and crossed over to the side of the gathering and healed the man and jesus came back and he kept healing and he kept healing jesus will choose to live sleeping in order to heal somebody he is that zealous about healing but the question is can men believe if thou wouldest believe the hardest thing to do most of the time is the ability to look away from what is wrong and look at the law and say i believe i believe that's the hardest the reason we remain in our chain is because we can't believe the day you believe that day you see the glory of god the word see is actually the word to experience the glory of god That's why I told you, your crisis is not that serious. All you need to do is to look away. It was Benny Him that told the story. A man of God invited him. He was having issues with cancer. But the man was so conscious of himself. And he said, please, I want you to pray for me. But when you pray for me, don't announce it. I don't want the church to be aware. And Benny said, fine, no problem. He came. And while the anointing was upon him, he wanted to pray for the man and the Lord said don't touch him he has not been able to look away unto the Lord it's when we look unto the Lord that he becomes the author and the finisher of our faith that's when he perfects whatever we need he said don't touch him and while they kept worshiping a point came when the man was overtaken in worship and Jesus said go to him now his eyes were closed as when he walked close to him he fell down and he was healed instantly if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of god the question is what will i believe the first the first thing to believe in is that the blood have cleansed you of your sins because when the devil comes what he does is that he whispers to you that you are not qualified are you not the one that did this yesterday you did this before coming to church and while you are wrestling in your mind jesus has passed and by the time you finish wrestling you discover the lord has gone so if you know what the blood have done then when you come to the lord you come boldly because the testimony that the lord hears the father hears is not what you say necessarily it's what the blood have said so in hebrews chapter 9 from verse 12 verse 14 and verse 24 see what the bible said neither by the blood of goat and calves but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place having obtained for us eternal redemption what is captured in that redemption forgiveness of sins and healing everything you ever needed the blood procured for it when he entered the holy tabernacle so when we come before the lord we forget about ourselves i may have made a mistake 
I may have fallen short, but now I'm in the presence of God and I came by the blood. So I lift my hand and anything I want, I demand it as a son. The devil can no longer come to tell me I'm not qualified. Why? Because when he speaks, I present the blood. So he said they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. Because these things will keep you there. It will choke the power of God. Even when they say be healed, you'll be struggling with your sins. But they overcame by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. The words of their testimony is simply the word homologia. That means they kept saying what the blood said. So when I come to receive my healing and the devil say you are a sinner, I say no, I am forgiven. Because there is one thing the blood said, forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. That's the testimony of the blood. So every time we show up, the blood says forgiven, forgiven, forgiven. What did I do? It's no longer a testimony before God. Forgiven. So if I show up, the devil wants to tell me I'm not qualified. I say no, I'm forgiven. Because that's what the blood did. The second thing to believe is the cross. The cross is where the judgment of God was passed. So every anger God had towards me, he has channeled it already. God channeled it to Christ while he was on the cross. So when I come to God, I come to him like a child who has been over pampered. But many don't know it. So they struggle. Imagine a child come to the father in the morning and say, Daddy, Daddy, and he's peeping at the door. The father will say, Is something wrong with you? Say, Please, can we have breakfast? Uh -uh. What do you mean by that? The father will be shocked. But that's how most of us approach God. He'll come, you say, Lord, please, please, if you don't mind, have mercy on me. And if you approach your father like that he will be shocked he will hold you and start checking your temperature are you okay is something wrong with you did you have a bad dream can we have dinner what do you mean can we have dinner you come to the table and say mommy is food not ready if they say they are still making the food say oh why is this food late that's a child he knows that he is at peace with his father and what necessitated it was the cross you know the prodigal son suffered unnecessarily for a long time he was the one that seen he was the one that heard and he felt his father will condemn and kill him and he went as far as eating with pigs all of that was not necessary we keep struggling the bible said he is touched with the pains and the feelings of our affliction god feels our pain that's why every time jesus sees the sick he said he's moved with compassion he's moved god feels that pain that you feel the prodigal son went as far as eating and living with swine it was never necessary until the bible said he came to himself and many will come to themselves tonight in the name of the lord jesus it's not necessary the pain is not necessary but we must come to ourselves and he said he said no my father have many born servants and none of them is as backward as i am i will go to my father and tell my father to receive me as one of his servants i'm not worthy to be his son while he was coming with his plan the father saw him afar off and the bible said the father ran to him embraced him kissed him and put a ring in his hand what that means is that the father restored him to become his son immediately and the father threw a banquet meanwhile the guy was living with peace because he doesn't know that the father was not angry after all the judgment of god have already been passed on the cross when jesus was on the cross dying and bleeding from seven sides when he cried eloi eloi lama sabachthani that was when god detached jesus from himself so that every judgment and every anger he feels towards you he felt it that day every blow that god wanted to give you he gave it to christ so when you show up now you show up as a man free from judgment and condemnation so it can never be god afflicting you everybody sick or troubled is under the siege of the devil 
And if he doesn't know that he's, he's forgiven, if he doesn't know that he's at peace with God, he will not fight. So instead of crying and talking to God, God's part of the question has been answered. That's why he said, speak to this mountain. Don't talk to God anymore. God has played his part. The devil only deceives us to make us feel that it's because God is not yet willing. That's why we are not here. God has already released the healing power. When Jesus was on the cross, the healing power was released. That's why I said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes, we were healed. So when you are sick, when you are afflicted, the person to pray to is not God. What you need to do is to command the devil to get out of your life. He said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Because Jesus knew the only person responsible is the devil. And he didn't say we should talk to him about it. He said we should deal with the devil. The reason is because we were restored. The signet ring of a son has been put in our hands. So when we show up, we deal with the devil. If I feel a pain, I don't tell God, Lord, I'm feeling a pain. You devil, get out. I don't care if I slept, whether I didn't sleep well. I don't care whether it's the way I rolled on the bed. No, it's the devil. Because all that Jesus healed were afflicted of the devil. And I said, devil, take your hands off me. And sometimes I say it, it doesn't happen immediately. I don't care. The devil must go because sons command and spirits of the darkness, they obey. That's the order. I didn't establish it. The one that designed the realm established it. If it was not so, he wouldn't have told us. He said, cast out devils. He created every spirit and he created every man. And he said, every man that is in him should cast out devils. That means whether the devil wants it or not, they will be cast out. The person who created this microphone, he said, if I press the power button, the microphone will on. So whether the microphone like it or not, if I press it, it must on. Because the designer dictates how things are done. But many are not aware. They come to God afraid. No. God is the one to run to. God is our assurance. God is our confidence. It's like a small child. The child offends you. And when you want to beat the child, he runs to the father. And he says, come now. Come now. That's what we do to the devil. We know that the Lord is our shield and our exceeding great reward. These things are very simple. They are the basics of the gospel. But they are the ones we, never, we don't know. Many people know mysteries. They know dimensions, but they don't know the basics. That's why men struggle. Because the basic of them all is ability to live free of crisis. That's how you serve God with ease. People don't believe it so much. Sometimes somebody is sick. You are going to pray for the person. And believers are watching. It go happen. It no go happen. It go happen. It no go. They are watching. Because we are not taught. That's warfare. You are coming to tell the devil. You have no right. And those who should join you and say yes. Come on. Get out. What are you doing here? They are watching. Will it happen? Will it not happen? So the devil now sees every other person that don't believe and tomorrow they go home they say i had pain in my stomach they don't know where it came from because the devil saw that they didn't believe god is not coming here to heal anybody we are actually healed it's now our responsibility to enforce it if you come to god now say heal me god will be like heal you from what you already healed when Christ was whipped. You take it. It's just like they give you a check of a million naira. And then you come and say, please, I need one thousand. And you say, ah, uh -uh. you have one million. You don't need one thousand. You have more than one thousand. What you need to do is to cash the check. But many people have divine health. They are asking God for healing. That's why it doesn't work. When you are a babe, it can be tolerated. But when you start growing, God tells you, you have it now. Imagine if you send somebody a thousand naira 
and the person now calls you the next minute and says, please, I need 100 naira. You say, ah, ah, have you spent the 1,000 I gave you? What happened to the 1,000? And the person says, I don't have any money. You say, ah, but I gave you 1,000. So your labor will be to show the person that the person has 1,000. Even if the person cries for 100 naira for one day, you say, no, I gave you 1,000, check, you have it. Because if the person doesn't receive the 1,000, if you send the 100, the person will still not receive it. So God has already given healing. We can't receive. Even if he releases another healing power, we still not receive. Because it's the way he sent the first one that he will send the second one. On the cross, when he was tried, every sickness that you can think of was taken away. So what you do is now to catch on on your check. And when the devil shows up, you say, no, you came to the wrong place. This is the wrong address. Because this one has become the tabernacle of God. And the only, the only one that dwells here is the Holy Spirit. The last time I checked, the Holy Spirit is the only one that should tabernacle here. And the Holy Ghost doesn't come with sickness. And you begin to war. This is the gate out of the crisis of life. When the Holy Ghost came, he didn't come with poverty. He didn't come with disappointment. He came with everything that pertained to life and to godliness. So when I see what is not consistent with the Holy Ghost, I know it's the devil. And I say, you devil, take off your hands. Because the Holy Ghost have no sickness. The Holy Ghost have no poverty. The Holy Ghost have no high BP. The Holy Ghost have no anxiety. So anything happening around me that is not consistent with the Holy Ghost, I say, devil, I know your finger. I've got you, get out. And when the teeth be caught, it will pay sevenfold. So if before I was naturally lazy, now that the devil is going, I will become more strong. Because when he touched me, he, 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 he implicated himself. What's the third thing to believe? The name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. That name, Jesus, is not a nomenclature. In the spirit, names are signets of authority. Now, see how it works. The believer who understands who he is in Christ, he doesn't pray about sickness. You know why? Why one person is saying by his stripes, I'm healed. The other person says, I have the Holy Ghost in me. And if that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead lives in me, the Holy Ghost will naturally revitalize my mortal body. So if I sense any pain, I just go and speak in tongues. When I come back from speaking in tongues, the pain know that he can't stay. Because what I'm doing is what? I'm sparing the Holy Ghost on my inside. And the Holy Ghost naturally, one of the things the Holy Ghost does naturally is to revitalize my mortal body. That's why I said, even if you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. You know what Jesus was saying? Dare the devil. That's what he was saying. You can dare the devil. So he said, it's not just saying be safe, be secure. No. He said, when you drink any deadly thing, it will by no means hurt you. That means the devil can throw his best shot. It's like an antivirus. When you mount an antivirus in a laptop, you can suck the web anywhere. Any virus can come and try. That's what it means. You are not just walking in health. You are actually the healing of the nations. That's why he said, we should lay hands on the sick. The sick will recover. If my hand is a healing therapy, how can sickness now live in me? It's like when a believer is sick, it's like saying an antivirus as a virus. It's not possible. But it takes understanding. It takes understanding that I am in Christ. Therefore, there's no condemnation. And the Holy Ghost is here. So even if sickness comes here, the Holy Ghost knows how to punch it out. This is the gospel. So you will go home and tear that lump in your breast and say you dematerialize dematerialize you wake up in the morning still there you say are you still here i say get out and then you are talking get out when the lump knows that you are resolute the lump will advise itself you know devils are like dogs when you say go 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 they look at you they will wag their tail and come back get out get out you'll still be there when you say get out from here the dog will sprint far away because he knows now you are serious so the Lord can be there. You are joking and pampering it until you now wake up and discover, no, this is warfare. You say, what are you doing here? Get, get out from here. And you'll be shocked. I mentor people online. And I taught them just the prayer of faith. And they went to practice and they were amazed. 
a lady who has never prayed for the sick before went and organized an outreach and a deaf ear opened another person that had fractured with pop she commanded the bones to be mended and the fracture was healed she couldn't believe herself i said yes yeah, sometimes you believe when you start doing it there are certain level of faith that is experiential jesus is not trying to keep you safe jesus is telling you you are the safety of your world so he said you dare the devil go and drink any deadly tea he can't hurt you when i travel i don't pray god preserve me what do you mean by that i stand up i say i am the safety of the road i am the safety of the road i am the safety of the road. because i'm on that road i will not only be saved everybody traveling on that road are saved from accident i am the safety of the road that's who the believer is i'm not doing it because i'm an apostle i understand what the bible says people were dying in my family i didn't have understanding until i found it and when i found it somebody they will say somebody is sick i say no you'll be fine i'm not praying for the person i have many people to deal with the bible said he causes angels to encamp around them that fear his name what are the angels doing if the devil come and attack my family then what are the angels doing and the last time i checked angels are always on duty it's understanding the power is in your understanding if you know it you walk out of your crisis as if they never existed the top thing to believe is in the name of the lord he said the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run it there they are saved now that is for babes the babes run into the name of the lord but when men begin to grow they carry the name of the lord as a mantle so we don't run into the name of the lord again we carry it like a gun and we look for the devil where are you get out get out the name of the lord becomes a weapon a weapon of war the name of the lord that's why he said in my name you shall cast out devils before now he said the righteous run to the name of the lord now the righteous run with the name of the lord in my name cast out devils don't hide from devils now cast them out with my name because because after he obeyed him he said he gave him a name that is above every other name that at the name of jesus at the name of jesus every knee shall bow every tongue so see what we do we not only expel the devil we compare the devil to bow to the name and he didn't say at the mention of the name he said at the name so some people call the name others wear the name so when they pass near you the demons will flee did you not read he said jesus entered into the tabernacle and demons began to cry out he wore it he wore it so some people wear the name so if they show up i read stories of aa allen he comes to a demonized person and he said i am aa allen and the demon takes off because jesus we know paul we know who are that paul has won the name so when they see paul in the spirit is like jesus and that's why paul said be a followers of me even as i'm a follower of christ is the name if you can trust in the name of jesus without anybody praying for you you can sit in your house and tell yourself my blood is cleansed in the name of the lord jesus you devil of infirmity get out of my body and you'll be sure that you will obey and i surprise you you can wake up and use the name of jesus to preserve your car it's not just your body because he opposes all things not human beings he opposes all things by the word of his power so you can come and tell your car don't break down in the name of jesus you can tell your business prosper in the name of jesus he opposes all things by the word of his power i was told when archbishop benson in the house i was building his cathedral money finished and they wanted to buy gravel and they came and said gravel don't finish again can you believe if thou wouldest believe thou shouldest see the glory of god jesus know what he was saying most times we don't believe because we have not meditated on these things before he gave us that name he went to hades in colossians chapter 2 verse 14 he said he spoiled principality and powers and he didn't do it in secret he said he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in victory in the days of war this is how it is done 
when two nations are fighting the nation that wins the king sits down on the day of ceremonies and then the king of the nation that loses comes naked with his weapons he drops the weapon and bows to the king that win that's what it means when he said he made a public spectacle of them that's why he said you that I have given the name he said you are more than a conqueror I was the one who conquered the devil you are walking in the victory I'm walking in the victory I'm not fighting anymore I am walking in the victory so when I shows up in the name of the Lord Jesus I say you devil get out of here and before the symptoms change I say glory to God when I pray I'm not even waiting for the symptoms to go sometimes I pray I still feel the pain but I say glory to God because I use the name it cannot but go that's what he said about Abraham he said Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief he was strong in faith giving thanks to God the child had not come but he knew he had been healed he knew because my symptom is a lie let God be true and all men liars who told you your business can fail it's a lie what we do don't fail it don't fail it can fail before we put our hands there the moment we put our hands it begins to walk so it is permitted to fail before I came the business can be failing before I invested it can't because there is something we have it's called the word of the Lord and when we speak the word of the Lord even the cosmos is realigned to obey Joshua was fighting and it was getting late and he said let the, the sun stand upon the mountains of Ajalo and the moon upon the valley of Gibeon and he said the sun did not make haste to go down who is that he knows the name of the Lord he stopped the day from ending and the, today we have a leap year because of Joshua it doesn't matter it may never have happened before but when I come with the name of the Lord even if it doesn't exist I make it exist because we are co-creators with him we are co-creators he brought us into that realm it's called the fellowship of the divine that's why I said we are joint heirs with Christ everything he has we have it now by the reason of the love of God he shared it with us so when I come it may not exist I make it exist I make it exist they say your family nobody prospers wait until the man that understand the power of the name of the Lord come he doesn't need to come with anything he comes with that name and he can change things you want to believe tonight rise up and let's war that thing that have been troubling you that thing that have been troubling you tonight enough is enough because until you rise up the devil will keep roaming around you want to pray you want to command the mountains to move he didn't say talk to God about the mountain he said you command the mountains to move and if you do not doubt in your heart if you do not doubt in your heart the mountain will have no choice but to move. Maria Matava Kizor. Bere de Bondre Parak. Zayanda Paranya Sava. Yala Lalas. Mande Pataris. Boronara Sava. Yakayanda Siva. Jesus. Jesus, go ahead and challenge that matter. Rabbanaya, the Lord of the Nakarabarak. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, listen to how it works. He said, if you will say to this mountain, the specific, the mountain may be cancer, the mountain may be deafness, the mountain may be lameness. If you say to this mountain, be that removed and be that cast out, and you doubt not in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. Can you address your mountain now? It can be your business, it can be your life, it can be your health, it can be your car. Tell this mountain. Be removed. Mayak. 
La Baraka Sina, Dede Dalis, Brande Kira Baraganos. Whoa! In the spirit. Barina, Sebarina. Barina, Sebarina. Bela Levanda Sebar. Command your mountains to move. Command the mountains to move. Raza de Boria na mão de Deus, Raza Tira Baranda Savoia, Savandra Prata. In the name of Jesus, listen. The mountains are about to give way. They have no choice but to move. Because we didn't tell ourselves. The one who created the mountain is the one who told us to command the mountains. So they have no choice but to move. In the name of Jesus. The shouting camp is the victorious camp. In the name of Jesus. I take charge over every devil of affliction. You demons of pain, demons of arthritis, blinding devils, deafening spirits, organ infectious demons, spirits of lameness. I charge you right now in the name of Jesus. Get, get out of their bodies. Get out of their bodies. Get out of their bodies. Father, command us to God. I command blind eyes begin to see. I command deaf ears begin to hear. I command broken bones begin to walk. Liver infections, organ infections. I command you out in the name of Jesus. I command businesses begin to walk. Businesses begin to prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus. Rabanda Sabakayas, Yelabonde, everyone under the influence of my voice, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and do what you could not do. Check your leg, the pain is gone. Check your ears, check your eyes. Do what you could not do. Rabanda Kavaya. What you could not do. When you are done, Yellow Banda Rabagoski, Talinas, Bori Kabos, Manta Kiba, you devil of infirmity, get out of her. I command pain. Go in the name of Jesus. Go in the name of Jesus. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I command pain. Go in the name of Jesus. Chola Banas, Rakina Banakabak. Go in the name of Jesus. Healed. Ali Ali. Listen. Check your bodies for your healing. Check. You will discover something has happened. Something has happened. And if you notice a change, can you wave at me already? You notice a change. Run out and tell, tell the Lord. Testify to the change. Don't be ashamed. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation. Run out, run out. You have noticed a change. Run out. Marina Parakinos. 
Ebenezer, Ebenezer. 